my name is uh, Dennis Hassabis. Um, is the team leader on the Go project. So uh, we're going to explain to you today uh, a, a little bit about uh, what we've done and um, the kind of context around it. Uh, of course, it's great to see uh, such excitement in South Korea about uh, about this news, and um, we're very excited to be coming to Seoul uh, in uh, middle of March to uh, to play Mr. Lee. Um, we're very excited and honoured that, uh, that he's accepted our challenge, uh, and it's a privilege to um, going to be playing him uh, in March in the in the, in the challenge match. So. Um, a bit of the overview of uh, what we did in the project and then uh, I'll hand over to my colleague uh, David to explain uh, more of the technical details and then I think we're going to have a question and answer session. So um, as all of you will know, the game of uh, Paduk originated in China uh, over 3,000 years ago. Of course, it's uh, hugely popular today. More, more than 40 million players around the world um, play the game. We think it's a beautiful game with, um, of course, extremely simple rules that lead to uh, very profound and deep complexity. In fact, my uh, uh, teacher once told me that Paddock uh, is such a perfect game, it was not invented, um, so much has always existed. And uh, I've always felt that is a true statement, uh, that somehow Go and Paddock has always uh, has uh, always existed. It's the most complex game that humans have ever invented. It has uh, more possible board configurations than there are atoms in the universe. And it takes a lifetime to study and master. Of course, um, many people study this uh, uh, throughout their whole lives in uh, South Korea. And uh, that's what makes uh, the game such an exciting and, and great challenge for A. One is that what's called the brown branching factor is much higher. In a typical position in Adam, there's an average of 200 possible moves compared to an average of 20 in chess. Secondly, it's to write down a set of logical rules that quantifies who is winning in a particular position. Because in Paddock there's no uh, concept of material, um, unlike in chess, which has pieces like queens and rooks um, that are worth certain points. So it's much easier to assess, um, for a computer to assess who is winning in a particular position. The strongest programs um, have uh, until now only been as good as amateur players. By beating Fan Hui, the reigning three times European champion and two Dan professional player, AlphaGo became the first program to ever beat a professional player in an even game with no handicap, thus achieving one of the long standing grand challenges of artificial intelligence research. However, the most significant aspect for us is that um, AlphaGo isn't just an expert system built with handcrafted rules like Deep Blue for chess. Instead, it uses general machine learning techniques so that the program figures out for itself how to win a paddock. The ultimate challenge though, of course, still lies ahead and we're very excited by which is to try and beat one of the best players in the world. So that's why we're so excited and thrilled um, that Mr. Lee, who is obviously a legend in um, the paddock world uh, and probably the greatest player of the last decade, um, has accepted our challenge to play a five-game match in Seoul in March. We'll be announcing more official details about that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we're happy to answer some questions about that too. But just to sort of finish by giving a, a context of why we're working on, um, uh, on, on these kinds of programs. So games are the perfect platform for developing and testing AI algorithms. Um, it allows us to test out our algorithm. Hi there, so I'm David Silver. I'm going to describe some of the internals that we used in um, AlphaGo to explain how we managed to achieve this, um, this result in the game of Fadouk. 
So the complexity of the dog leads to an enormous search space that's intractable to brute force techniques. The key to AlphaGo is to try and reduce this complexity, to reduce this enormous search space to something more manageable. But to do this, it finds a state-of-the-art tree search with deep neural networks. In AlphaGo, we use two neural networks, each of which combines many layers of um, neural-like connections with millions of tunable weights. One of these neural networks, which we call the policy network, predicts the next move, and we use this to narrow the search space so as to only consider the moves which are most likely to lead to a win. The other neural network, which we call the value network, is used to reduce the depth of the search tree. So this network actually estimates the winner from each position, rather than searching all the way to the end of the game. AlphaGo search is much more human-like than previous approaches. For example, Deep Blue, when it played chess, searched by brute force over thousands of times more positions than AlphaGo does when it plays Hadouk. Instead, AlphaGo looks ahead by playing out the remainder of the game in its imagination many times over. During each simulated game, the policy network suggests good moves to play, intelligent moves to play, while the value network astutely evaluates the position that is reached. Finally, AlphaGo plays the move that was most successful in its simulations. So I'm now going to describe how we actually trained these neural networks. So we first trained the policy network on 30 million moves from games played by human experts. After training, it could predict the human move 57% of the time, and the previous record, just for context, before AlphaGo came along, was 44%. But in fact, our goal is not just to mimic human players, but actually to beat them. And to do this, AlphaGo learned to discover new strategies for itself by playing thousands of games between its neural networks by self-play and gradually improving them using a trial and error process known as reinforcement learning. This approach led to much better policy networks. So strong, in fact, that the raw neural network immediately, without doing any look-ahead search at all, was able to, eat, to beat state-of-the-art programs which think and look ahead um, using huge amounts of computation and building an enormous search tree. Once we have these policy networks, we use them in turn to train our value networks by playing out many games, millions of games of self-play policy network against policy network and again, applying reinforcement learning to estimate who is going to win at the end of each of these games. These value networks can evaluate any particular position and estimate the eventual winner, a problem so hard it was believed to be impossible. So how much stronger is AlphaGo than previous programs that played Badoq? To answer this question, we played a tournament between AlphaGo and the best of the rest the top Go programs at the forefront of AI research. AlphaGo won all but one of its 500 games that it played against these programs, using just a single machine. In fact, AlphaGo even beat these programs when it gave them form three moves um, head start, in other words, a four-stone handicap. Thank you.